Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another video today. We're going to be going over Zynga. Uh, we're going to go over my analysis for it and I'm going to tell you guys what I think. If you guys uh, like my content, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment any any other company you want to see me work on or do an analysis on or anything else you might want to see on the channel. Uh, follow me on Facebook, my uh, same name as I'm on here, Ray A. Galding. And um, yeah, I'm not, let's get to it. First off, I am not a financial advisor. I don't have a license. This is entertainment. This isn't meant for you to go and trust everything I say and buy Zynga and then lose all your money and for you to sue me. Don't sue me, bro. I think my cat's messing with my green screen. All right, let's do this. So first off, what is Zynga? Zynga is the global leader is a global leader in interactive entertainment with a mission to connect the world through games. To date, more than one billion people have played Zynga's franchises, including blah 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 and blah blah blah. Zynga's games are available in more than 150 countries and are playable across social platforms and mobile devices worldwide. Founded in 2007, the company is headquartered in San Francisco, with locations in the U.S., Canada, U.K., Ireland, India, and Turkey, and Finland. All right, but what, is all, what does it all mean, Governor? Um, basically, they're a mobile game company. I mean, that's basically what it is. Most of the games are on mobile now. If you remember way back when to... Uh, old Facebook days in Farmville, Zynga was actually in charge of Farmville until they got into a whatever with Facebook and Facebook said no more. So let's move on. All right, so what's under Zynga's umbrella? They got Peak Games, Rollick Games, Natural Motion Games, Team Chaos, Super Labs, Harpan Games, Graham Games, Small Giant Games, they got a lot of games. Here's all the companies that they actually have. Oh, shoot, go back. Uh, so they got Natural Motion, Rollick, Peak, Giant, Small Giant Games, Graham Games, Peak Games again. I, they, they had two different acquisitions, so that's why that's on there. Team Chaos, Super Labs, Spooky Cool Labs, November Software, A Bit Lucky. Buzz Monkey, OMG Pop, Market Zero, Area Code, New Toy, Bonfire Studios, Dextros AG, Conduit Labs, Challenge Games, Oh No Gaming, Oh No, Oh No, Oh No, uh, XPD Media, Flock, and Floodgate Entertainment. So they have plenty of companies under their umbrella. They've been buying out different companies for a while now. Uh, so if we look over here, this is going to be telling you when they bought the companies and um, how much they were. So I guess we'll just, I kind of went backwards with this. I should have started with the least good ones, but yeah, we'll just work on it. So they acquired Rolex back in October of 2020 for $180 million and peak for $1.8 billion. That's an the market cap on Zynga alone is only like 10 billion, so they really, really made a made a big move there. But I can see, I see it going well for them. See, they acquired Small Giant for 56 million. They've had, they took a little two-year break in acquiring anything new. Peak back in 2017 again. They acquired. They bought part of the company. And then this $1.8 billion one is when they bought out the rest of the company. Uh, Harpoon, which is, they have, that one's more of a, it's like a card game. I think they got po one of their poker games from Harpoon. Team Chaos, Super Labs, National Mo Motion Games, Spooky Cool Labs. Now, I don't know how many, this might be go over a lot of people's heads, but I remember when I was a kid and they let us play on Cool Math Labs. That was spooky cool labs, so I don't know. I mean, if they, Zynga has this, it's almost like Zynga has the contract without having the contract to be able to play games at school. So, uh, could could work out in the future. 
I don't know. I don't know now if they still Cool Labs is even a game. I've been out of school for almost ten years now. All right, now we're gonna look at the revenue to bookings. So their total revenue for quarter three of 2020 was 503 million, with most of that coming from their Forever franchises. Forever franchises include CSR Racing, Empires and Puzzles, Merge Dragons, Merge Magic, Toon Blast, Zynga Poker, Words with Friends, Toy Blast, uh, and then they got their others. So they, you can see they get the majority of their pie all from the same people. So that's good and bad. It's good that they have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different money-making games that bring in a total of 71% of their revenue. Uh, and so this is what on Google Play, because, or yeah, on Google Play, because I don't really care about Apple. Uh, I know I probably should have looked up Apple, but yeah. So anyways, you can see that they got quite a bit of downloads. Almost each of these have two million, and these are the one, some of their more popular ones. Now, Harry Potter is right here, Puzzle and Spells. This one just came out at the beginning of the year, or end of last year. So that explains why this one's so far down. Words with Friends. I honestly don't know why that one has such little, such a little uh, thing. Maybe it's because Words with Friends won had a higher one and just no one has played Words with Friends 2. I mean, no one has reviewed it. I'm not really quite sure on that one. I didn't look into that too much because, I mean, honestly, that part didn't really matter to me. As long as they had good good reviews and they pretty much have good reviews across the board, the lowest one is four here with Words with Friends, but then they go all the way up to almost five stars, almost five stars, four and, and, four and three quarters. Oh wait, no, that's like three fifths, isn't it? Two fifths. Yeah, whatever. Um, so let's move on. So what's bad about this company? So they've been putting up, posting worse EPS last years, but that's because they're doing mergers and growth. Uh, right now, they're you can almost consider them a growth stock. I mean, I don't know if I'd really consider them that, but right now they're definitely in growth mode. Um, their mobile DUA and MUA, which is daily average users and monthly average users, is increasing very slowly, but at a huge jump during COVID. So that could lead to a nice little exit once, uh, once COVID's all over and we can go do whatever we want. They could see a lot of their mobile act daily active users drop after that. But, you know, we'll just have to see how well they did at capturing their audience. Uh, mobile average bookings per mobile daily average user, which is a bunch of technical terms right there. Uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, they've been up and down, not really showing a lot of support that they are becoming more efficient in finding and maintaining users to their platforms. So basically, average mobile average bookings per mobile daily active user is basically how many people are using it a day divided by, or maybe not divided by, but in relation to their average bookings, which a booking is is basically like someone spending money on their uh, on their app. So with it sh not really showing a lot of support, it's kind of a little worrisome. Like I said, with this max exodus that might come at the end of COVID, could drive them down. But personally, if it does, I'll probably still just buy more. I'll probably just buy the dip, to be honest. I see this company going, going places in the next, you know, three to six years. All right, so they're pros. The revenue is up $100 million, or 62%. Their year-over-year -year bookings are also up 62% in the U.S. They've more than doubled revenue in two years from $212 million in the quarter three of 2018 to $484 million in the quarter three of 2020. So... You know, it's two years, but still, to double just double that up, you know, that's pretty good growth, man. It's pretty good growth. 
So they have almost three times the bookings from uh, from 230 million in quarter three of 2018 to 609 million in the quarter in Q3 of 2020. That means they have found a way to execute harder on getting people that are using their apps to actually buy this stuff on their apps to, you know, whether it's, I don't even know what you would buy on there, more chips for the poker thing, or, you know, I don't really play a whole lot of mobile games, so I guess I maybe probably should, but, yeah. So the future timeline, so this is where it gets more exciting for me. So they've entered into a purchase agreement with Morgan Stanley and uh, Bank of America, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs to issue and sell $762 million of notes, which is basically, it's like he's sell they're selling a certain stock to these people that they can use, at a, that they can sell or keep or, I don't know, I guess basically do whatever the hell they want with, but only at a certain point. There's stipulations on when they can do it and probably even stipulations on how but I didn't look into it that much. I just looked into it as a possibility of they have a good chance to sell in a few more years. So, so the notes have the ability to be cashed by the company on 12 2023. So that's pretty good if you take into account, you know, every two, uh, two years, they uh, in two years they jumped up a lot and you know they could continue to do well and then in 2023 if they want to buy some big company they'll be able to cash in on these shares and should be able to do pretty well uh, and then the investors can cash out in 2026 so they have an idea price point of around like $13 that might be in the next slide but hope I'm not ruining that but they got an ideal price point of like 1307 if I if I can remember correctly uh, by 2026 so that's not you know that's a 30 percent gain in six years which isn't isn't a whole lot but I assume that if they think the minimum is 1307 then they probably assume the stock price is going to be like 16 or 20 dollars because they got to make money off it you know they, these banks are bottom line all they want to do is make money so you know we'll just see how it goes so yeah, that's that's pretty much a just it's not a huge in depth one, but it's just a little quick little tidbit. Uh, you guys can go follow me, like I said, over facebook.com slash Ray Golding. I'm also on facebook.com slash Ray was here gaming. Uh, w U Z H U R. It's very weird spelling, I know. And I didn't think about that when I started it, but you know, it happens. Uh, so yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you guys want to see next. Thank you guys, and have a wonderful day.